Last week, Swag signed with a new org, and it's not just the same old fucking guys on the roster anymore. It's a roster that might actually be able to do something. But you know what? That's not even the point, because I've been waiting for years to tell you what Swag really brings to the table for an org that has the guts to sign him. And I'm not just talking about what he does in the server. So last week, your boy Braxton Swag Pierce signed with an esports org called Lazarus. They're new on the scene, they used to be called STDX, bit of an unfortunate name, not really the point. Canadian org though, shoutouts to Canada. Now I don't know how this new org is going to handle this team of NA players, but I've been wanting to talk about Swag in particular. Now in case you've been living under a rock for the last... I don't know, four or five years. Obviously, he's one of the players that was involved in the I Buy Power match fixing scandal. He got banned uh, indefinitely, aka for life, from any Valve sponsored CSGO event. So, this once great figure has been forced to toil in the lower levels of CSGO for a number of years. And none of that has changed. He's still banned. But there's something special about Swag in particular. I know it, and you know it. More so than the other players that got banned via that I Buy Power scandal, there's a mythology that surrounds this young man. He's like Robin Hood, he's borderline legendary status because he got banned because in his young days, in sort of the prime of his career or right before the apex of his career, he was cut down. He was taken away from us by Valve or by deciding to match fix whatever you want. That's not the point of this video. The point is we lost swag. We never saw him fulfill his full potential and thus it created this aura around him that he was like a magical, mythical figure and everyone likes to talk about what ifs. Oh, what if swag was unbanned? What if he never got banned in the first place? Would Cloud9 have won a major before they did in Boston? Would that specific I Buy Power team go on to foster a new NA scene? Did we get set back in NA competitive CSGO so many years because of that big ban? Well, these are the questions that surround this player and these are the things that help build up his mythology. And that mystique is where Swag's value comes from. Now don't get me wrong, he's a great player. He can still do incredible things, but personally, and you can flame me in the comments for this one, I don't think at present time in 2019, he can hang with the best of the best. I don't think he's gonna win a 1v1 against Simple. I don't necessarily think he's an Astralis killer, but he is a great player. The problem thus far is that being a great player has not been enough to counterbalance the fact that he cannot attend Valve events. You cannot make a major with swag on your roster, so of course orgs have stayed away from signing him. But here's where I would argue that's a mistake. Success in esports, success in CSGO is more than just winning. Yes, winning is a huge part of it. Yes, winning is still the best way to win fans, to get brand cachet in any esport, especially CSGO, but it's not the entire piece of the pie, especially in 2019. You gotta put butts in seats, so to speak. You gotta get YouTube views, you gotta sell jerseys, and you need to attract sponsors. The best way to do those things is winning. But guess what? Not everyone can win. That's just how math works. Not every team can win a major. Not every team can make a major. Look at this last one in IEM Katowice. We had great teams that didn't even get to go to Poland. Shout out to Mouse Sports. So if teams in the top 10 HLTV rankings aren't necessarily guaranteed a spot in the major, what good are teams at the bottom of that top 20 or God forbid, outside of that top 20, what are they gonna do? Now, no org is ever gonna admit to you, maybe even to themselves, that they're not gonna make the major and every team should be built to win. Of course, I'm not arguing for a pure publicity stunt move here. But the fact of the matter is, Swag is a good player. He brings a presence in the server, but so much more. The mythology, the mystique, the fandom. You put his name on the back of your jersey, you will sell those jerseys. You get people talking about him, you get him to tournaments, sponsors will take notice, money will come. You put him together with four great players, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna start winning, or at least competing. Every esports org, including in Counter-Strike, is obsessed with the idea of winning, 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 and they should be. It's a competitive endeavor. But the best ones realize that's not the only way to get fans, to get sponsorships, to get money coming in and butts in the seats. So you can't have your entire brand value be predicated on one concept. 
And again, this is why swag is so valuable. And if you think this isn't a real worry, just look at all the CSGO orgs that have pulled out, come back in, pulled out again in the last, say, two years. I mean, Dignitas, CLG, Rogue was like two weeks ago, and those are only some of the bigger names. There's been tons of smaller orgs that have tried to make a go in this very cutthroat esport. They haven't cracked the top 20, top 10 of HLTV's rankings, and they've disappeared. That's the reality. It's an expensive endeavor. Hell, even SK Gaming has talked to us personally about the trouble that they've had when it comes to sponsorships in CSGO, so every little bit helps. We did make an entire video on that, by the way, so you should probably check that out too. So just to be absolutely crystal clear here, guys, I am not saying that you can sit at the bottom of the proverbial tables, sign swag, and make that cash. That's just not how it's gonna work. It's gotta be winning, and it has to be personality brand cachet as well. It actually reminds me a lot of something Ocelot told us when we interviewed him on our podcast earlier this year. If you follow G2, may not be as a hater as a lover, you know you will be entertained. You know that, you know that. Right. You will watch our games. You know you'll be entertained. It doesn't matter what games you look at. We are always top two worldwide, or top three maybe worldwide in terms of viewer, viewership numbers. Any game you look at, uh, and which as a result, provide a very good kind of uh, league revenue sharing, whatever league we're a part of. Hell, some of you guys have been following us for a while, probably know I'm a FaZe Clan fan, and well, um, they haven't won anything in a little while in CSGO, but you gotta love them, because the branding is on point, the personalities are there, and yeah, they're great players too. So that's what I'm talking about, the synergy between performance and brand. If you don't believe me, just flash back two years ago when Cloud9 subbed in swag for Summit. It was just Summit, but no one would shut up about it. It was like the most exciting thing in CS for six months. There it is. Oh, what? Yes. Shut up, swag. Now, if you're still watching this video and you still haven't typed a comment in pure rage saying, but Colin won't sign swag because he's not unbanned and the foul majors or everything. Ha ha. To that, I say, how about this? How about an org goes out, gets swag. They put them together with four great players with obviously some synergistic team play in mind and they just mindlessly pick up the top 10 players they can find, right? They put together a good team with swag on it. People start talking. They start going to events. Dream hacks, e-leagues, ESL stuff. They start winning a few of them or at least placing competitively. I think they're gonna have such a groundswell of fan support. People like you and me saying, this team is amazing, you gotta let them play. That Valve will actually amend their rules and let them into a minor and then potentially open the door to a major. You might say it's crazy. I know Valve has a track record of not bending when it comes to this kind of stuff. But if there is a strong enough community movement, a strong enough grassroots push, I think it could actually happen. I've been waiting for years for an organization with A, the foresight and B, the guts to go ahead and do this and show us what's really possible. Free swag. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.